Hello, good morning, and welcome to the program Perspectives. This morning on the program Perspectives, we'll be staying on with Kaduna State, and of course, talking about happenings, you know, or matters arising in the state. And of course, um, it has not been, you know, a smooth sail, you know, on matters of governance of recent. Uh, we'll go back to the, you know, uh, the NLC uh, and government, you know, um, face off, so to say, and the outcome of it. We'll also be looking at, um, you know, right sizing that uh, is taking place in the Kaduna State Civil Service. We'll also look at the insecurity that is on the high, you know, as some people would say. And, and um, another APC faction, um, the APC Restoration, a uh, top member of it had called for, you know, the president to declare a state of emergency in, in Kaduna State. We'll also be looking at, um, you know, um, you know, um, the, 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 the things that are happening about, you know, when we go back to Zaria and about the outco outcome of elections in, in, in Savangari local government and where, you know, um, uh, the APC was roundly defeated, so to say, with, emerge, you know, the emergence of a PDP uh, candidate. Now, all of that and what is saying about um, this administration and its poise towards um, 2023, and I will take you again into, you know, the local government elections that may, coming up in August. All of these try to, you know, put up, you know, on on, on that. My guest this morning is Dr. Katuka Bigi. And Dr. Katuka Bigi is a former caretaker committee chairman of um, uh, Jama and Kara local government. Uh, he's also been a former special, senior special assistant, special projects to the governor. He's an APC stalwart and the former PRO of, of the APC. He's my guest by phone this morning. Uh, Dr. Katuka Bigi, good morning and glad to have you on the show. Uh, thank you, Mr. Trina Lavi, yes. for having you on the line. Yeah. We, 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 given, you know, I gave a background there about the many happenings in, in the state, uh, matters arising, uh, so to say. Uh, I'd like to first, you know, bring up the issue of, um, you know, right sizing. That's the way the, this administration had described it. But, you know, others will say this sack of um, workers. And uh, so disturbing as it is that you sack and then these people are left without, you know, handing them the package for future survival. And, of course, again, government says it's, it is working on that. But that's, that's, that's creating a really, you know, big problem, as some people would say, in, in the state, especially in this time where... You know, we know that insecurity, and we know that uh, there are there are willing hands. You know, that could be recruited into the criminality that we see going on. For for you, um, the right sizing that the government has said it is doing, and the consequences of implications of these on uh, matters of governance in the state. Your thoughts here? Well, um, the the issue of the right sizing that is ongoing in the state. As a matter of fact, I, I want to look at it from two perspectives. The first is on the side of the workers. Any other person who feels is a kind of a, uh, direct deprivation of a source of livelihood. And um, no one will be in the position of a worker and be comfortable with it if you look at it from the layman's understanding. Then on the aspect of governance, there are certain realities that if you actually want to move ahead with, uh, with, 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 with the state or the, the affairs of government, there are critical decisions that one has to make as a leader, and especially that we find ourselves in a critical time where the economy of the country in general is actually not something to write uh, home about. So it is only necessary that certain steps be taken and in the course of taking that critical decision, definitely one party must be hurt. But what matters is, um, is it the right thing that is supposed to be done? And at the same time, the party that is involved that is affected, um, what other ways can be looked at in trying to make an alternative source of living for that category of person? But we know very well that long before now, the the, the, the the civil service has been a place where we have a lot of people being engaged on the ground that 
and they are there to work. But if you look at it critically, if you go from department to department, you see that it has absorbed more than what is required of to carry out the assignment, the term of reference for such departments and agencies and other uh, ministries of government. So, as I said, it's a two-way thing. From the worker side, actually, it's hurting that the source of livelihood is deprived. Then on the aspect of true governance, it's a reality that cannot be avoided, especially in this critical moment of economy. And then we have, we've seen from different states where workers have stayed for more than 10 months, 11 months, six months without payments. These are the ugly situations that if you actually want to avoid those situations, then there are critical steps that you cannot be ashamed of or you cannot be afraid of to take such decisions in order to sustain the very people that you'll be, I mean, the very, the very workforce that you'll be able to contain in your state so that in the end, it will not be the same story with what is happening in other states. I think it's my position in this regard. Well, again, government is about the people. And um, this administration had said, on, on, you know, from the onset, that um, it is in the people come first. And they, the, the interpretation that some people give to this is that why is government not having human face in, in all of this? But again, you know, explanation of government on, on this, if, that people will fail to understand that uh, it, at this point the government has to take certain decisions. And, I, you know, glad to hear it that the governor had said, you know, even his address, you know, at uh, the turn of this uh, tenure, that um, the, the, the pains will come, but it will come with its gains. And, and so we... we people understanding it from that perspective will say, yes, I mean, this has to be done. But when you're talking about the people, making the people understand, and at this time, this critical, critical moment that you mentioned, the economy not you know, at its best, insecurity also taking its place, and that uh, people will just be asked to go home and uh, without you know, knowing where mana would come from. Having a human face to all of this, what's your way of looking at it? Well, um, defining it in the context of a human face, one thing that... Um, we, 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 we sometimes we, we look at we uh, the emotional aspect of it does come in, and um, but as I said, I'm very sure that even the layman understand uh, the situation the country are finding itself, and uh, there are realities that we cannot even shy away from telling it as it is. In the first place, I always make this reference that um, if you look at the economy, uh, I mean the source of our uh, what do I call what do I call um, um, the source of our our, 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 our money, I mean, uh, the, the, the revenue for even the country, the country at large, you see that it has completely gone down. The allocation, that the, 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 the federal allocation that, that we used to have in the past is no longer what is obtainable. And you are also aware that what the, 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 the report that we're hearing from uh, the NMPC, which is uh, one of the major sources of our, our revenue generation, is telling us that it's not going to even remit anything from now henceforth, I don't know by what, what particular time. So it, it's only telling us the danger that lies ahead. And with, 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 with such allocation coming down, it's only telling you that there are certain things that you will get to a point where we cannot even sustain what the, the, the minimum thing that, 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 that the, the, the minimum workforce that we have on ground, if certain decisions are not taken, no matter how hard it is. Sure, it's actually unfortunate, as I said earlier, that it's going to affect some people directly, where that is their source of livelihood. And then taking certain measures and uh, in it, uh, trying to curtail uh, the occurrence of a, 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 a negative effect in the future, there are decisions that we have to take, I mean, the government have to take in order to see the to see that it has, uh, 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 it has at least sustain what it has on ground so that we don't fall in a situation where it's irredeemable. And, um, yeah, I'm listening. Yes, Sorry. opposition, opposition in the state, uh, as you know, at any given time, would, would find a way to knock on, on this administration. And it has described it, you know, in very strong terms, you know, that are not in the interest of all. High-handedness, you know, I've referred to the, the executive governor of the state as, a, as an emperor, and I've said that uh, this administration has no, you know, um, not, the, the people do not come first. All sorts of you know, yeah. interpretations about matters of governance. And I want to take you to Zaria, you know, where 
where you know it's about the local government um, i mean um, uh, constituency the defeat of you know uh, the apc candidate there where people have said that's the stronghold of this administration and that had never happened until this time could this be consequences of you know the people reacting and saying that um, this is what you get for how much you have treated us okay let me let me uh, i think your, your question is in twofold in respect to okay the people addressing the governor that emperor probably was i handed or whatever it is mm. yeah is the is that that is the opinion of the people and uh, you cannot you cannot you cannot put it upon the people that uh, uh, the, the, your, your opinion must supersede their own opinion or whatever it is. But from my own angle, there are times that uh, you earn a name because a, a leader, as a leader, you, you take certain decisions that are not friendly to the people. And uh, I think you, you will know better what, what, what uh, I remember, uh, this who in particular, Frank Fanon, defined what the leader should be. That sometimes a leader is somebody who knows the way as you're able to go to the way and show the people the way, even when they do not understand the way that will lead to prosperity or whatever it is. And I think uh, sometimes leaders are misinterpreted and uh, uh, given names that they do not deserve because of their position on certain issues. And in the end, it's for the benefit of the state at large and the people in particular. But as you said, leadership is about the people. But there are times that you don't, they don't even have an understanding of... Um, uh, that, that of understanding of what 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 the leader is doing sometimes not until at least it, uh, in the long run it is for, it's proving that it's for their own benefit then in respect to the election that took place in Sabongali local government i think what, what 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 we ought to do is to salute the governor his excellency for allowing the process of democracy to take place we are aware of uh, different states where if uh, a ruling party uh, the, 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 gov the government police would not allow any other poli uh, political party to conduct a fair and free election as it was done in Sabongari. That will also it come with not... consequences too. I mean, when you try to deprive the people or, you know, deny the people their, their wish. We have seen so many cases in Nigeria where, where, where governors seek to write the result on behalf of their local government and, and what have you. These are things facts that we cannot deny. But the fact that we are like, the, 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 this has the, 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 this, uh, the, the election that took place in Sabangari was a fair and free one. I think on that aspect, we should commend the government for allowing the fair process to take place. Then on the second hand again, that uh, a particular candidate is favored and uh, in the end declared a winner only implies that the people sometimes decide on who they feel should represent them on for reasons best known to them. There are other factors that, may be, uh, that, that, that actually came up that led to 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 to, 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 uh, to the people supporting the candidate from PDP and uh, or perhaps not supporting fully the candidate from the APC. And uh, even within the APC party, maybe there are internal factors that led to them not giving a good uh, performance uh, in the last outing. So uh, it's not just about whatever it is, about the perception of the people, about governors and what have you, but also there are internal factors and other things. And I think it's just uh, an eye-opener for the uh, ruling party, which is the APC, to come on board to see, okay, to look at that as a case study so that they can be able to put together the what led to the, the result in Sabongari. Well, I want you to recall what had taken place in the past in, in, in Chukun local government and in Kaura, that, that this yeah. moment we're still talking about having a caretaker committee, you know, chairman in, in this local government. And that, again, I referred you to the people, that when the people say this is their say or their wish, can we stop that? Because we must refer to this local government and in how it just did not work with imposing a candidate or whoever on, on them. So local government elections are coming up in August. And so um, are you worried again about, especially with your party, that um, the people's reactions and uh, governance as it is, that uh, yes, we can give a loud you know, standing ovation to innovations in the states, reforms that have taken place, and, uh, you know, all the good things that some people say we're saying with this administration. But again, as it affects the people, these reactions, can we stop them? Can we, you know, uh, just say that um, 
we, we, we must go on anyhow, you know, not minding the people's feelings. Well, um, for the local, the forthcoming uh, local government election, I, I'm, 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 I have no doubt that we are going to give a good, um, uh, uh, I, I mean, um, we, we are going to have uh, support from all the electorates. And uh, when you begin to make references of government policies that are actually not friendly, I think the one, the one, the one that you've been specific I'm not, is about... I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not the one saying that. I am talking about how the people are reacting yeah, okay, to this Of course, I'm trying to tell you from, your, from the, the court of public opinion. Yes, that's well, yes. I'm just standing the as the devil's advocate, yeah. Yes. yes. And um, specifically, I don't know, is it uh, about the one you talked about, the issue of uh, the policies that are actually not friendly, and, uh, and maybe uh, the state of insecurity, and what have you. But um, these are realities. That, I mean, there are certain things that, 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 that I think the people, no matter how you think, they, they go about um, uh, questioning the activities of the government. There are certain things they know they are realities. They only want to look at it from human perspective and the emotional aspect of it and say, okay, look, this is how... Uh, this is what we all we, we think the government should be able to do, but uh, somebody, if I if I uh, have in the capacity of a, a caretaker committee chairman, and I know the challenges I have to, uh, to pass through, and especially when it comes to having resources to run the affairs of the local government, I can say for instance when I was in Jamal local government, there were times uh, I think almost all my stay through in Jamal local government then. I stayed for 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 almost about a, one year and and, and 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 eight months, and and almost half of it the the, the, the money that was sent to me it was not even enough for me to pay for the salaries of workers. The government have to complain amend it from the streets till they get to a point where maybe some verification or exercise were conducted before uh, uh, maybe everything was somehow rectified to some extent. Then again, when I got to Kara, uh, the, the instances where the minimum wage was implemented, I can tell you categorically that all through, there wasn't money to even pay for the uh, the workforce that we have on ground at that time. So, Dr. Katuga, before you, you know, go on that, with the autonomy that the local government had, and uh, you faced all of that? Well, you when, when people talk about autonomy, Autonomy is one thing as well, on the other side. Then the resources that you get as a local government on the aspect of, from, okay, uh, di directly from the the, 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 the fact is another thing on its own. Now your you funds, you know, allocations to local governments being tampered with, you know, even as we say that, um, yes, you, you could boast of uh, local government chairman having autonomy, I mean, be, being on their one own. Thing that, one thing that, one thing that, 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 that credit must be given to His Excellency in this regard is, uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking from the political aspect of it, I'm not trying to be a politician here, but as a realist, that... If there's any person that I've advocated for autonomy or somebody who tried to implement it first, it is His Excellency, where he insisted that appointment for local government should be directed to them without any interference or whatever it is. And so far, so good where I was there to some extent, I can say I witnessed it as a first-hand person. And it was only a matter of was the resources enough for the local governments to be able to take care of the salaries of their staff and at the same time have a reserve where they can come up with people-oriented projects like um, feeder routes, uh, electricity, uh, tap water, etc. So these were the things that were actually arising at that time. So I don't think that any government that will try to work on something that will affect the people that is actually governing especially when it comes on the poorer promises that it's going to do everything to better the life of everybody. Bettering the life of a citizen does not actually mean uh, having it on a bit of rosters. For changes to take place, there are times that uh, certain decisions that, are, that look to have, to totally not have human peace will, be, will have to be taken. And in the end, one party or the other will be hurt. And uh, what matters the most is if that thing is done in fairness, justice, and equity. 
Dr. Beke, is it, you know, I, I just want to ask you this question, and, and um, you can, we could personalize it, that um, are you in any way sympathetic to, you know, the feelings of uh, those that have been affected by, you know, uh, you know, government policies, I mean, reforms and all of that. And again, you know, I talked about the civil servants, the right sizing that is going on. And then we will come back to this big sore thumb, you know, on matters of governance. That, that's on insecurity. What are your thoughts about, you know, the feelings uh, of the people? Sorry. I think uh, even the even 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 the governor and, and uh, all government officials responsible for carrying out this thing, if you actually search right inside them, they have that feeling too. They they touching them. But as I said, when it comes to issue of governance, there are decisions that that you, sometimes you have to take. That no matter how hot. How bad your emotion is going to be, you're going to feel it emotionally. There are times that you just have to close your eyes and do it because you actually want to change the course of things and give it uh, a different look. And so personalizing it to me, I can tell you that categorically that I have so many uh, her brothers, I have so many sisters, I have so many relatives directly or indirectly attached to me that have been affected in this exercise. And uh, sometimes, you are clouded with that emotion. You are clouded with that, um, that, 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 that attachment of a thing that no matter how you want to, it's always difficult for you to try to defend such reforms because how do you want them to understand? How do you want somebody who has a living from, uh, from, 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 from the civil service, let me say, for example, the service, how do you want to tell him that would the reform that has affected him that have deprived him of the source of livelihood is actually friendly. But, as I said, there are realities that we cannot shy away because from the look at what, the way the economy is dwindling, we are getting to a point where if care is not taken and if the right steps are not taken, we'll get to a point where we'll just not dive and completely everything will be put to a stop. So it's better to stitch a time, to stitch in time to save nine. Okay, doctor, we'll go for a commercial break. I'll be with you when we come back from the break. Thank you. Welcome back. Is the program Perspectives this morning. It's on Invicta 98.9. And um, attention is on matters arising in the state, in Kaduna State. And my guest this morning by phone, Dr. Katuka Bigi, a former chairman, Jama and Kaura local governments and a former senior special assistant on special projects to the governor you know, or government and is an APC stalwart and a former PRO of the APC. It's my guest this morning. Dr. Katuka. Yes, Mr. Torian. Yes, okay. I, I just want to take you back, you know, take you back in time and I recall your days in Amadebelo University. You were, you were sure. a union leader. You were a uni unionist. Sure. Yes, and again... Um, What's coming up now? Uh, students, you know, uh, the, the increase in school fees, so to say, you know, brought the students out to protest that, um, you know, that that was high on them on and high on uh, whoever is taking care of, of them, you know. And um, in the course of it, this is coming from the southern part here. Students or a student was, was killed. And you, for a unionist, in your, you know, taking you back to when you were a unionist, What's wrong with having protests, peaceful protests, and why you know clamping down, coming on hard, on this, on these innocent citizens or students, so to say? Well, with the recent happenings in respect to our institutions and the the, the, the institution fee increment, it only make me reflect back on my days as a unionist in the university and what led to even my expulsion from the university. And I tried to put myself in the issue to. And, uh, to think along their line. And it's only normal that students will definitely protest whenever there's a decision that comes that has to do with their welfare. And um, in respect to what happened in Kefanchan and College of Education, I sympathize with uh, the whole situation, especially those I mean, that have been affected. I've been told about um, uh, one of the students that was killed in the cause of the, uh, the, the protest, and I actually... It's, uh, it is African with us 
once it comes to matter of that, even your enemy, you do forgive and try to pray that God comfort their family and what have you. Let alone uh, when it comes to a student who is actually trying to put it that he is not comfortable with the increment and trophy. And it's unfortunate that it led to that situation where a lot, lots of life were involved and people injured. But I'm happy that the government came, with, uh, came up with, uh, with, with a clear statement, with an official statement, that there was never a time they directed, they directed any of the, uh, uh, the, the law enforcement agency to go and, um, and, and forcefully with those students from the portal ground, whatever it is. But uh, I think not until the investigation is carried out and the root cause of what led to the death of one who, and uh, one of the students, one of the students, and also the injured students. I think for now we wait for the outcome of the investigation and the report finally, so that we will be able to comment appropriately. And uh, on a general note, uh, uh, as I said. No any student or no any parent will be comfortable that when it comes to tuition fee increment, he will be ready to support that. And I remember my days in the university, as you said, I there was a protest, I was directly involved and uh, I think I was inducted. They were the based on the submission of the panel then where it led to my expulsion before finally being reinstated. And um, in that regard I I I am I'm I'm I'm, I'm sure the peaceful protests that have been ongoing uh, even well, 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 since it started in Kaduna, not until the ugly security report we received from that of function. I think it has been going uh, the, the, the way it should. And uh, when people, when, when the students are protesting, I think it's just about uh, leading to a stage where the two parties will be brought together so that a, 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 an agreement will be reached where um, in the end there will be a consensus uh, resolve that will be of benefit to both parties. And um, I, 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 I don't think I will, I, will, I will spare any moment in this regard to say, OK, I'm in full support of this party, I'm in full support of the other party, or whatever it is. Um, I find myself in a dilemma. As somebody who has been an advocate of uh, going revolting against uh, anything that has to do with tuition fee increment or my days as a union, that's why I don't think I will, <laughs> my position in this regard will be uh, I'll definitely keen to support the idea of the, uh, I mean, the fact that the student are actually crying that is high on our, is, is, is on the high side. And I, I, I believe in the end, the government will have to give a listening ear to see what they can do at best to cushion the effects so that most of the poor student will not be put out of the streets or what have you. Let's, go, let's also back. look at one short term in, on matters of governance, and that's, that's on that. insecurity. Now, I'm bringing this up because, again, uh, it's on the high. Everyone knows it's on the high, and people are asking where is safe, again, for us now. And, and the, the criminals are inching in into, you know, moving into, you know, areas where one could say that uh, one could be safe. So the thing is just where you safe. And I want you to bring up at this moment, you were a victim of this kidnap, you know, this banditry or, you know, however, you, you, this criminality, so to say, that you were kidnapped as a chairman or a caretaker committee of your, this local government, and it happened to you. And uh, so we begin to look at ordinary citizens and what's happening to them and the demands being made, especially on, on ransom, you know, being asked by these criminals. For you, those dark moments, uh, that dark moment of your life, you know, could you recall and, you know, how you got out of it? Yeah. Um, as, uh, for me, I think I, I'm a man of many experiences. I've seen this a lot in life and what have you. So I consider this one as part of it as also an adventure about life. And I'm happy that in the end, I actually came out healthy and alive, and I have my experience to share. And also being somebody who was uh, who was serving as a chief security officer of a particular local government, I was privileged to certain information that has to do with insecurity and other things. And not until I was a victim of it, I think uh, I also add up to my experience in respect to the general insecurity that has actually been developing our country. And. Um, the, the high rising of the insecurity case in our state is actually unfortunate. And every day, uh, for me to be a victim, I think I, I, I can tell it better than any other person. I understand the trauma the family are passing through and uh, how difficult it is it to them 
people are at this critical moment. And that's why every morning I wake up, I pray on their behalf and say, God, please do intervene in their case and make a way for them to come out of that situation. But it's not just only about prayer. It's got also give our security, our law enforcement agencies that are saddled with the responsibility of protecting the citizens, the technical know-how, the ability, the understanding of how to go about tackling this issue. And uh, it is, it is, there's no guarantee in trying to cover up that the insecurity has, has not actually enveloped us because um, every day we wake up with the story that you heart beats any time you want to go on the social media to see oh, what's the next thing that happened. And you only pray that you are not, none of the story is coming up on board, but only for you to hear one or two things coming up. I only actually sympathize with the whole situation. And um, But somebody who had tried to connect history, uh, to connect the past, this is what is actually happening to us generally, not in Kaduna State, but also in the country at large. It's the outcome of an accumulated, uh, do I call it? Uh, uh, bad governors that have been with us long before, even after independence, because we have never gotten a right from the foundation. And these things are actually the sequence, the consequence of bad governors where things are not being done to check the future. Okay, what lies ahead in the future? This is where we got it wrong. If we have had a government lie from the beginning, where there's actually thorough planning about what as with us as a nation in the future, I think we'll have gotten to a point where the situations wouldn't have gotten to this point. No doubt that the kidnapping of a thing that my, my those are actually adopted by, I can say this thing categorically, that they are from the full line extract. But it is not the, for most of them, I realize that they are not most of the local full line that we have around here. And uh, you have people that they're, they're actually claiming to be flying, but you know very well that these ones are either from abroad and uh, neighboring countries, either from Chad, Niger, or, or, or what do I call uh, yeah, Niger, Chad, and uh, Senegal, or whatever it is. They only come to forcefully put the normal flight that we have to key into their own ideology of uh, radicalism or whatever it is. And because these ones are there at their mercy, they willingly join hands with them and in a way they think they find a new way of business and things like that. And uh, the situation is very ugly based on my position, how I see it. And that's why I can only advise that uh, the security will have to take the, the properly trained to see how they can call, go about handling this thing. And uh, I think there's this added that said, as that land to fly without pitching, so hunters learn to shoot without missing. Mm. This is what I expect our security to, to begin to look into critically, to make it a case study, to make it a research field. How can we go about tackling this issue? Otherwise, for now, it's an ugly and uh, it's not something good to write home about. It is the prerogative of government to protect lives and property, you know, of the citizens. And uh, what we're seeing now for you. Um, as uh, security you know, agents, so to say, um, done enough about protection of lives and property? Well, the, I, the, we, we, what we cannot, we cannot, we cannot deny is that it is, it's, it's only up to them to know, okay, it's all, it's all, the, 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 from the, 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 the court of public opinion, and uh, analyzing it from the security angle, and maybe the security expert would be in a better position to tell categorically if they have done enough. But I don't think if, uh, they, they, they have always shown improvement. And uh, not until the best is given, I don't think we have done enough in terms of uh, trying to control this uh, situation. I think it's up to the security. That's why I say it's a tax to the, uh, the, 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 the start up to them that they should, as much as possible, do everything within their means. Given the fact that I'm very much aware that there's the, 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 the support by, by the government, there's financial support given to the security operatives in the, in the, in the, in the best of way the government can afford. And um, what lies ahead of them, uh, what lies with the security is, their level of training, have they been trained to the extent to contend this uh, menace that is actually, I mean, they actually be developing us as a society? 
Have they been, uh, been, been, been fully prepared? Have they been fully equipped in uh, tackling this issue? And uh, then it comes to issue of sincerity and commitment. Then also we have to look at from the angle of the security welfare. Have Nigerian government done enough to address the issue of the security, the, the security welfare? And also, is there any reward system that is in place? That anybody who is committed, patriotic in the fight against this cause, and the cause of it where he lost his life or he got injured, somehow will be compensated, just as it is with other developed nations where we see a law enforcement agency willing to die on behalf of their own country because they know the honor that lies ahead whenever they make sacrifice for their own country. So these are factors that need to be put in place to be considered. And there should be a kind of reward system where patriotic and guideline law enforcement agents or officers are actually rewarded in accordance to their commitments and the sacrifice they made on behalf of their own country. Okay, but doctor, uh, let's just take this to the public domain and uh, get to hear, you know, uh, citizens, you know, uh, talk on um, subject of discussion this morning and uh, numbers sure. to call to be part of this program, 081-40,989. 081-40,989 or 070-87-800-989. 070-87-800-989. Your calls. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Tony Alagi. Good morning. I greet you, I guess. Uh, good morning to you, Victor family. My name is Musabala. Yes, your guests have spoken very well, and uh, my conclusion is that uh, even though painful, all the reforms in Katuna are giving some pains. And uh, generally, we hardly have any reforms without some pains. And I believe 100 percent that these pains will suddenly disappear and the generality of Kaduna people will be better off. In terms of security, true, uh, government basic responsibility is to protect life and property of the citizens. But the issue, we, are, we have some pockets of people within the society that they are the originator and perpetrator of certain kind of crimes. Like when we see family members uh, planning against family members. When we see stakeholders in the society hiding criminals or supporting criminals in one way or the other, I'm assuring you there's no government on earth that can solve that problem without the true collective responsibility of the citizens. I wish Nigeria the best of all, and I wish we'll have better leaders after this set of leaders with all the necessary reforms to reform our society back to normal. May God continue to bless Nigeria with good leaders, no matter where they come from, and distance us from corrupt leaders and their agents. Good morning. All right, uh, morning, sir. Okay, you still with your calls? Still taking your calls. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hello. Yes, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes. Good morning. Yes, I'm on to who now? Adi Kwekba is my name. Adi Kwekba, yes. yes, let's hear you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the program. Uh, the, on the election you are talking of, but not the local government election. That is a local issue. I pray that uh, God will guide this uh, electoral uh, body to do the right thing. But I want you to align your thinking faculties in mind. Let me pray for you. Now, I want you to pray to God. Not to see this type of uh, admission two times in your lifetime. Second prayer, pray to God to forgive Nigeria for our stupidity, to request, to reject the good luck admission and welcome the opposite. And that's what is happening now. Thank now you. the obligation we are having with uh, this uh, security, the problem is being caused by the head, which is being led by the, uh, the admission of this uh, uh, let's uh, let's uh, be let's uh, be let's be let's be mindful of uh, you know let's choose our words. Uh, uh, please uh, let's be civil too thank with our you. comments. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, the ad the admission of uh, this uh, present one, the Ministry of uh, Finance, they try to tender evidence for seven billion with us for the National Bank Development Council. Secondly, the 2021 project. Contain 200, 316 duplicated project work. What that is 9.5 billion dollars by state by the project IT. These are the ones being done under the 
bribery administration. And now, people who are protesting, they want to, the EFCC are appealing for who are going to see 60 as bribery welcome him as senator. Who was accused of stealing a 20 million plus? Is that the, the, the integrity government? Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, well, uh, well, you're done. Okay. Well, no, uh, thank you, thank you very much. All right, thank, thank you. you. Yes, uh, well, uh, our thoughts this morning is uh, mat uh, matters arising in Kuduna State. Um, the Kwekwe has moved us to the national space. But again, thank you for your submission. We'll take one more call and uh, come back to our guest. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning to your guest. It's Francis calling. All right, Francis, yes. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Mr. Tony. Yes. Sorry. Honestly, it's as if uh, our leaders are taking us for granted. Your guests have analyzed all the questions you're asking. But I have issue with him on the particular question you're asking about the killing of the student in Kapanjan. Mm. He proved that, to be frank with you, all Nigerian politicians are the same. Because you ask him a question, what is his, his position in killing a student because of protest about Kishore Height? He could not speak his mind concerning this issue as a unionist during his time. Whether what happened is the writing whether what government did in terms of hijacking or increasing tuition fees right or not he say he didn't get to win because he's part of the government what type of leaders are we having in this generation now it's very very unfortunate mr francis okay we, we, we got you on that let me just come back to uh, dr katuka biggie yeah you had our callers the musabala well musabala calling for collective responsibility on, on matters of security. Adikwe sure. moved us to the national space uh, about what is happening and uh, money has been, you know, set aside for projects and all of that not been executed. And of course, Francis, you know, from the rear saying that uh, the killing in uh, of that student and uh, those wounded too, uncalled for, so to say, and that uh, you know, you, 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 you did not, you know, give a clear court picture of uh, your thoughts on, you know, what really happened. Uh, having been a unionist before, uh, you know, at Amadebile University. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Torin. Yes. I think being the moderator, you will have been fair to me by uh, telling him how I actually approached the question. First, I said I sympathize with the situation that the Africans that we have, we have to, and then once somebody is dead, naturally we... I wanted we, you to reinforce, you know, so that right. it gets you clear. You understand? Yes. And I make that clear that it's actually sympathetic that we lost to such a, a child in the cause of the protest and what have you. Mm. And again, again, putting it to the government, that me and you are aware that the government came up with an official statement. Yes. That there was never a time they actually instructed any law enforcement agency to go about the, the, what, what they did in, 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 in like a fanchan. So, not until proving otherwise, an investigation definitely will be carried out. I think what the public should be concerned is the outcome of that investigation. So, in essence, let's actually know the root cause that led to the killing of that innocent chap for now in court. Well, again, but, give us a last line. Yes. It's actually unfortunate that it led to the loss of life, mm. no matter what it is. Okay. Well, on that note, Dr. Katuka Bigay, we'd like to thank you for coming on the program this morning. The pleasure is mine, Mr. Turin. Thank you. As always. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. Pers okay. Perspectives this morning uh, with um, Dr. Katuka Bigay, uh, former chairman, Jama, uh, Katuka committee chairman of Jama and Kara local governments, and the former senior special assistant on special projects to the government, or governor of Kaduna State, APC stalwart, and um, former PRO of the APC, sharing thoughts with us on matters arising in the state. We'll come back with perspectives tomorrow. Joe, Daniel, thank you for connecting us with the people this morning. And Wisdom, thank you for putting us in the pictures. We'll come with perspectives tomorrow morning. Good morning. <laughs>